Good morning. When did God speak a word to the inhabitants of Judah? Well, several times, but there's one in particular. Our reading today takes us to it at Jeremiah chapter 22, verses 20 to 23. Go up to Lebanon and cry out and lift up your voice in Bishan. Cry from Abarim, for all your lovers are destroyed. I spoke to you in your prosperity, but you said I will not hear. This has been your manner from your youth, that you did not obey my voice. The wind shall eat up all your rulers, and your lovers shall go into captivity. Surely then you will be ashamed and humiliated for all your wickedness. O inhabitant of Lebanon, making your nest in the cedars, how gracious will you be when pangs come upon you like the pain of a woman in labor. This might seem a little bit obscure to us, uh, not knowing some of the historical background, but there is some historical background. Jeremiah 22, verses 22 to 30, seems to have occurred sometime during the reign of King Coniah, also known as Jehoiachin. Uh, this, we know exactly when this was. This was December of 598 BC out to March 597 BC. So there's just a few months this guy is even king. We'll find out more as we read today and tomorrow. This guy's a real winner. So now invading armies coming up from Babylon would come up the Fertile Crescent, up the river from the heights, from the mountains. You can see the path as they would turn and descend then into the land of Judah, the land of Israel. So now as time goes on, when all their attempted alliances and their deals and the influences and all the negotiating and all that stuff basically fails for the kingdom because Babylon is coming and nobody can really handle Babylon in those days, what's going to happen? Well, disaster. And it's interesting what it says here. God, he says, I spoke to you guys in your prosperity and you were just busy being wealthy and eating grapes and uh, didn't do anything with all the things I tried to do to reach you. And so, you know, it's quite interesting. This is similar to a place way back here at the end of the Bible in the book of Revelation. There are seven churches there in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. And many interpreters, we also think these seven churches actually also stand for, for different periods in the history of the church. And the seventh church is the last one in the series, and that's called the Laodicean church. And it's quite interesting when you look at the situation in the kingdom of Judah at the time of this, of the prophet Jeremiah, and you look at the situation in the book of Revelation at the very last days, the seventh church is the last in the series of seven. There's no eighth church. So what do you have there? Well, in Revelation 3, when we're at the seventh church, what do we find? A people who say, we are rich, we are increased with goods, we're doing awesome spiritually, everything's in order, everything's just fine. We, we're not interested in anything that you have for us. This is a church that's rich and increased with goods. It's, it's so self-absorbed that it's creepy. And that is what you have there, and that's what you have in the time of Jeremiah. The church was very self-absorbed. I should say the, the nation, very self-absorbed. And But God is still sending messages from his prophets. Jeremiah and Baruch here is helping out. This is the situation of people who are receiving emergency messages from God, but they're not listening, not at all. So for the kingdom of Judah, it's time for large-scale repentance. I mean, this is this is urgent. And so God is sending it through his prophets. And also we find in book of Revelation, a people who are oblivious, and yet they're on the edge of eternity. What usually comes next in these cases? Well, in the case of the kingdom of Judah, a large-scale humbling, if we want to be very generous. I mean, it was very severe what's coming. And so God's warnings are there, but the people are sleeping it out. You know, periods of pride very often immediately precede periods of God's most severe judgments. May God help us today so that we are in his will and in his purposes in this urgent hour in earth's history. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we want to be right. Uh, Lord, we see how you had to humble the leaders in the kingdom of Judah. Lord, help us, help our hearts to be right. May we be totally committed, uh, totally committed to Jesus, Lord, so that we have all of your purposes high on our list, the highest on our list, and we will do the things you have for us. Help and bless your people, Lord. Strengthen us. Show us your pathway. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. Put, put repentance in our heart, Lord. Help us to find our way home, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So God spoke to the inhabitants of Jerusalem in the midst of their prosperity, and they, they had trouble hearing that. May God speak to us. Even though we have microwave ovens, we're air conditioned, our cars get good mileage, we have all these electronics. I mean, what else do you need after you get one of these crazy phones? But we need Jesus. God be with you today.